Welcome to my channel of how can leaders make better decisions. In this video, we'll talk about vision. You've probably heard that vision is leadership 101. You need to have a vision. Your organization needs to have a vision. The question is, if the vision is supposed to inspire and motivate people, then how to make a vision that truly inspires and energizes people? In this video, we'll look at what neuroscience can tell us about an inspiring vision. First, your vision needs to be bold that grabs people's attention. What grabs people's attention? Two types of signals that activate our attention system. The signals that are important to our survival and the signals that suddenly change. Attention is a limited cognitive resource. Attention by its nature is selective. We pay attention to one thing while simultaneously ignoring others. When we say pay attention, we do pay for it at a mental cost. Attention influences how you code sensory inputs, store that information in memory, process it semantically, and act on it. Our attention system uses multiple brain regions that interact to enable us to selectively process information in the brain. The attention system in the prefrontal cortex which is behind your forehead, determines how your sensory system processes income signals from your vision, hearing, smell, taste, and touch. For this to happen, millions of neurons are constantly monitoring the environment to select the most important signals for you to attend to. The attention system is sensitive only to dopamine. When dopamine is released, it triggers the attention system in which neurons start firing electrical impulses that stimulate other neurons. These neurons are collectively the attentional filter. The attentional filter processes selectively the incoming sensory signals guiding you where to look, what to listen, and what to think about. The attentional filter works largely in the background, below the threshold of consciousness. We are consciously aware of only a small bit of the vast amount of information available to our sensory system at any given moment. The unconscious attentional filter follows two important principles to filter the information for human brains, importance and change. So if you want your vision to grab people's attention, your vision needs to be bold enough to stand out. If your vision is similar to many other vision statements out there, your vision does not grab people's attention. If people don't pay attention to your vision, how can they be inspired and energized by your vision? In 1962, to rally national support for a very expensive program of human exploration to the moon, JFK delivered the speech, We choose to go to the moon. He said, We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. In the 1960s, this vision was bold. Many people were excited. They didn't know how to go to the moon exactly, but they wanted to be part of the group to figure it out. How do you feel when you have a blood test? If I tell you that with a finger prick, I can tell you how healthy you are and whether you have cancer. That's the vision of Theranos, a technology company that later got into a lot of trouble. If you are interested in how Theranos fell and ceased operation, you can find many books and investigative reports out there. The company's trouble didn't come from the vision, but from what the leaders did to realize that vision. In fact, bold vision is a part of whether people see you as a charismatic leader or not. What's your organization's vision? 
Is it similar to other organizations' vision? If your vision sounds like the one that people have heard elsewhere, why do you think that your vision can energize people? To find an example of a bold vision in education, I searched the vision of big school districts in the United States. This is the vision of the biggest school district, New York City Department of Education, with over 1.1 million students taught in 1,800 schools. The vision is about equity, excellence, justice, diversity, resilience, and being culturally responsive. This is the vision of the second largest school district, Los Angeles Unified School District, with over 700,000 students. The district will be a progressive global leader in education, providing a dynamic and inspiring learning experience where all students graduate ready for success. One more example. This is the vision of the third largest school district, Chicago Public Schools, with almost 400,000 students. The vision is about student-centered, whole child, equity, academic excellence, community partnership, and continuous learning. All these vision statements talked about student success and values of equity. They are abstract language, but not image-based rhetoric, which we'll discuss later in this video. Moreover, just because you say you want all students, regardless of their background, to be successful, doesn't necessarily mean this vision is bold enough to inspire and energize people. If every district says the same thing, then it does not grab people's attention. Suppose you are a job applicant for a position in these three districts, all else being equal. Which district's vision inspires you the most? To be honest, I haven't seen any vision statement of educational organizations that grabbed my attention instantly and energized me to be part of what they do. With the attentional filter, we experience many things in this world on autopilot, unless we pay attention to them. If you want your vision to inspire and motivate people, your vision needs to be bold that grabs people's attention. Second, to make your vision inspire people, your vision needs to resonate with followers. Does your vision reflect your goal as a leader or the goal of followers? Followers can only be inspired and motivated to respond enthusiastically to a leader's vision when they see their leaders as one of us, rather than someone who is out for themselves or one of them. In the field of educational leadership. Most of the literature talks about leaders need to articulate their vision, but that's only one side of the story. If vision communication takes both sender and recipients, then how is a vision received by the followers? Do different followers process the same leader's vision in the same way or differently? In fact, the followers' brains process the leader's vision differently, depending on how the followers see their leaders represent them, fight for their interests, and create a world in which they feel they matter. This shared group membership between leaders and followers is called social identity. It is the sense of us. It is the glue that binds people together. When the leader shares the followers' social identity, the followers process the leader's inspirational vision by recruiting the brain regions processing somatic information. However, when the leader does not share the followers' social identity, the followers' brains dismiss the leader's inspirational vision as the non-inspirational one. So it is not enough for a leader to articulate a bold vision. It is possible that your vision can be poorly received and even dismissed. 
a leader needs to be considered by their followers as representing them, fighting for their interest, and creating a world in which they feel they matter. In fact, that sense of connection people feel comes from similarities in brain activity in the same brain regions between followers and their leaders. If a leader's vision resonates with the followers, their brain activities are synchronized. In neuroscience, it's called neurosynchrony or neurocoupling. You and your followers are not only on the same page, but also on the same wavelength. Third, to make your vision inspire people, your vision needs to arouse emotions among followers. Emotions have a motivational function. The root of the word emotion suggests that emotions compel us to act. When we are motivated, we are driven and want to roll up our sleeves and get it started. What kind of visions arouse emotions? In addition to making your vision resonate with followers, you can also remember the past and then envision the future. When people envision the future, the brain's default mode network is activated, including the ventral medial prefrontal cortex, which is part of the brain regions that process emotions. Moreover, the brain regions activated while envisioning the future are the same regions activated while remembering the past. The memories of past can be a source of pain and anger. But if these emotions are followed by envisioning a future that is comforting and hopeful, who want to sit idle? Envisioning the future is very motivating. An example of envisioning the future is Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s I Have a Dream speech. It was a vision that has rallied many people, and the people were excited to see what their future could hold for them. The speech not only has soaring rhetoric, but also takes audiences to mental time travel. It helped people to envision the future with specific images. The image in which one day, out in the red hills of Georgia, the sons of former slaves and the sons of former slave owners will be able to sit down together at the table of brotherhood. And the image in which one day, even the state of Mississippi, a state sweltering with the heat of oppression, will be transformed into an oasis of freedom and justice. These words and phrases generated vivid mental images of what the future could look like. This image-based rhetoric technique of envisioning the future is more effective than using abstract words such as equity and student success in many of the school districts' vision statements we saw earlier. To craft a vision that rallies people around a common goal, it is not enough to use abstract words such as equity, community, learning, and excellence. People's tendency to favor abstract language that cannot easily be visualized is called blurry vision bias. To overcome the blurry vision bias and to make your vision inspiring, you arouse people's emotions by remembering the past and envisioning the future with specific, vivid, image-based rhetoric that takes people to mental time travel using their five senses, what they see in the future, what they hear in the future, what they smell in the future, what they taste in the future, and what they touch in the future. It is that vicarious mental experience that gives people hope and generate excitement. And these emotions are motivating and contagious. One more question. Does your organization's vision statement have to be one sentence? Not really. There might be a rule out there saying that a vision statement needs to be a short one sentence. Here are my thoughts. First, 
It is a rule, not a law. If you break it, you won't be put in jail. But there are consequences if you break a law. Granted, rules are there for a reason. Some rules are important for organizational operation. When it comes to vision, if your vision statement is compelling, there is nothing wrong with two sentences or five sentences. By the way, rule breaking is sometimes a trade for good leaders. Omelet is not made without breaking eggs. Organizational change is not made without breaking rules. After all, if we follow rules blindly, are we perpetuating the status quo? Second, the function of a vision overrides the format of a vision. The function of a vision is to inspire and motivate people. You can craft a short but powerful vision, like the famous three-part phrase "government of the people, by the people, for the people," which was borrowed by Abraham Lincoln in his Gettysburg Address. A powerful one sentence like this seems to be the exception rather than the rule. Not every vision statement has to be one sentence. In this video, we talked about how to make a vision that inspires people. We look at what neuroscience evidence has told us about vision. To make your vision that inspires and motivates people, you need to first make your vision bold that grabs people's attention. Second, make your vision resonate with followers. And third, make your vision arouse emotions among followers, such as by remembering the past and envisioning the future with specific, vivid image-based rhetoric. What's your organization's vision? Does it motivate you to put your whole heart into work? What's the vision that has inspired you? Please share it in the comment section below. In the future, I'll create more videos about how to apply neuroscience to leadership practices. I'll see you next time.